Hello friends. Hi. <laughs> we are going to, well, I guess the idea is we're hoping you'll hugify with us a little bit here. The we're way, outside. I know, but it's still hugification because it's nature. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe you're in your house cuddled up with yeah. some tea and candle. Wherever you are. You know, the whole idea behind YouTube videos is often we should have bullet points and make it fast and quick. We're hoping that in this one, you'll just hugify with us, settle in. Come along for the ride. Yeah. Get comfortable. And we're going to do this the same way. We haven't rehearsed this or put an outline. We're going to answer somebody's question. And it's a pretty deep and serious question. But we're going to do it just through a conversation between us. You get to be part of that. Obviously, in the comments, you can be part of the conversation. But along the way, see where it leads your mind and what thoughts you come up with. Okay, go. The question? Yeah. It's the big existential uh, Somebody asked, how do we, I mean, I'm paraphrasing. How do we love life? How do we appreciate life when we know that everything comes to an end? Mm -hmm. So how do we deal with that dread, I think, is the word that they used of knowing that everything is going to die, everything is going to fall apart, everything is going to break. How does that not just overwhelm us? Yeah, and shut you down. It's yeah. a really valid question. And I think one that we've talked about in the past before between us. Yeah. And there's a lot to it because it's more than just the question. There's things in the question assumptions, perceptions, beliefs that also have to be looked at, but sometimes aren't. I really appreciate that because there's often you can think of a problem like this, just, well, push through it, change how you think about it. And in a way, that's what we're doing. But seeing that anything that creates fear for us, anything that we're wrestling with, there's layers of meaning and assumption that that's built upon. And sometimes if we look down at those things, those foundation blocks, then the problem that we thought we'd have to deal with will dissolve. And I think we'll probably find that that's largely the situation with this one. So where do we start? That's hmm. a question. Where, where do you want to start with it? Well, I want to start kind of a little devil's advocate because I remember reading in one of Alan Watts's books if you're not familiar with him he's a, a philosopher that focused a lot on eastern philosophy and I remember him talking about a rose and saying <laughs> that was very Hugh-ish <laughs> a rose a rose and saying that what we really appreciate about a rose is that it's not permanent. And he used the example of plastic roses. But I always thought, well, what if you could have a rose that was a real rose, but lasted a long, long, long time or lasted mm -hmm. forever? Would that be actually kind of neater than a regular rose, even if just for its novelty? So his explanation never really made a lot of sense to me that the whole idea is we appreciate things because they are impermanent. So I do think there's a seed of truth in that. Well, from the opposite perspective, I think that's one of the reasons I love living where there are seasons because things do change. And in some ways that change is very beautiful. I also understand change can be sad, especially when we're attached to the idea of something sticking around. But then my question is, would you want everything to stay the same? <laughs> if you truly thought about it, would you just want to be, okay, now you are how you are right now, and it will never change. Your children will never get any older. I mean, is that really is that really what we do want? What are we seeking for? That things will never change? Or is it, I almost think, maybe to be liberated from that dread? Mm the concern that things are changing. I don't know. 
I mean, maybe a few people want everything to stay the same. And Maybe. I wonder if that comes out of our... If I think about living as hunter-gatherers back before civilization, everything in your world was very tangibly impermanent. Mm. And things shift. You're in touch with the shifting of the seasons, for instance, mm -hmm. as you spoke about. So life is this flux and this change, this organic shifting. But then in comes civilization. And mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the effort of civilization is to try to create the illusion, at least, of non-change. Mm -hmm. So our homes, for instance, we keep them at a regular temperature at all seasons so that we no longer have those fluctuations of warm or cold. And with our electric lights, and even back with, you know, using our lanterns and things, we could extend the night as long as we wanted to. We weren't as subject to this transition of night mm -hmm. and day. With our medicine, we've managed to stave off death and make people live longer if, you know, probably we haven't made them live happier or more vibrant lives. Probably individual. But longer. So is this something that comes out of civilization where we have this, this effort to create a state of non-change? So in essence, the question you're asking is, is part of the dread that we're experiencing not actually our own, yeah. but comes from a culture that's taught us that things should stay the same. And, you know, if I may, that you should look a certain way, you should act a certain way, and you should feel a certain way. And that we are, yeah. we are intrinsically beings of change. In fact, if I think about myself, I go through ups and downs on, uh, on any given day m multiple times. And I am thinking that why, why do we expect that we should always be happy or always be satisfied or always be polite or always be these ways that our culture has taught us. So I guess I think that I would say partially, yes, our culture creates the atmosphere of change is bad. I didn't even think of it in the context of emotions. That's the ideal, isn't it? To have just a steady state of emotion. Mm. You know, we're kind of exaggerating here maybe but but it sort of is we we're frowned upon if we're super excited or we're super sad or we have any kind of strong mm -hmm. fluctuation of emotions in general in our culture we want people to appear all you know like above this Just kind <laughs> of happy and good but not too happy but yeah it's, it's confusing. And then I guess I think about when we do start to put energy into worrying about change, into the dread of it's all going to end, what's the point? You were bringing this up, that that just takes away from the ability to be in this present moment, which is, I think, the place you can actually access the answer to this question in the present moment when you're truly here. Yeah, that's something we've spoken to, I think, in a lot of our videos, is that concept of you have so many mental points in any given moment, mm -hmm. and that's your, your mental energy, your attention, your focus, where that's going. So if we have 100 points and we're using 20, as I talk to you, I'm using 20 of those to think, oh my gosh, you know, we won't last forever, or I won't last forever, one of us is going to have to... Mm. Then, how much of the energy of actually being here with you right. is taken up by that? So we have this learned behavior through civilization that teaches us essentially to step out of the present moment to some extent and to worry about the loss of what is here right now right especially especially that was not the right word essentially essentially to use energy for being someplace other than here and what we really want is to be 
here. I think that's what we're really longing for. In a weird way, worrying about everything ending and changing and being different robs us of actually the joy of what we really want, which is to savor this moment. Um, I don't know. When I think about change, a lot of times I think about death. And mm -hmm. that's a really big thing. My death, the death of people I love, the death of the planet, the death of whatever. And we spend a lot of time thinking about death, or maybe we should spend more time thinking about it. <laughs> that too, one, right? one way or the <laughs> other. But I guess what I'm trying to say is we have a preoccupation with death. When I feel that the flip side should be true, we should say, what is life? What does it mean to be alive? Ooh. We should have a preoccupation with life. life. Ah. <laughs> and the quest to be in life, to be alive. You know, what is the purpose of this life? To be alive, to live it, to feel it. It's, so it's going to end. Well, we don't really know what happens. So we can't That's actually right. say that. But instead of worrying about all that, what if we could take that energy spend it on the present moment and live it and and live that's the choice to make i'm gonna have preoccupation with life sometimes when we would talk about things like this i'm thinking 20 years ago more mm -hmm. than that especially in our canoe rides when we would sit and philosophize mm -hmm. it will spark realizations maybe that's happening for some of you as you watch this but as you spoke about that being in the moment i mean it's hard to explain what I felt there, but to clumsily put it into words, this feeling of just, if, if we are here, if we're immersed in this, there is no, there's not going to be any dread because we are, we're fully present. And I mean, there's an idea that if we go out, we meditate enough and we immerse ourselves into this present moment enough that it becomes eternal we see that even the concept of linear time is something that emerges out of thinking that this moment is going to end mm -hmm. and we enter a state of timelessness and i think we've felt this yeah. at times we've known people that have felt this state of timelessness when you're in that state of timelessness everything's clear you said it earlier the answer is in that mm -hmm. being present moment and there it is we can truly immerse ourselves there's no question anymore because there is nothing outside of this eternal nowness that got pretty mystical <laughs> i'm trying to follow it now <laughs> this nowness no but i mean f for the right people out there that is going to be making sense here's a different way that i sometimes look at this and i'm going to talk about death i think about when i lay down to die and whether or not any of it quote matters isn't the point of it the point is that at least for me personally when i lay down and take my final breath if you know this is like if i don't have a sudden death whatever i have the time to contemplate what am i gonna think about my life am i gonna say well who cares because none of it mattered so i'm glad i just you know did what everybody wanted me to do not for me i want to look back and go i was as present as i could be for every moment and i remember flying kites with the kids when they're growing up and i remember holding my grandchild for the first time and i remember helping that lady just last week and how she smiled at me i want to choose life i want to choose the joy so that when i am done which again we do not know whenever this quote world's death happens I feel that I was there for it. Mm. Whatever else happens, that's, wow. that's my personal choice. If it doesn't matter either way, why not choose what brings you joy? <laughs> if, I mean, I just can't say that enough. If it doesn't matter, then pick what makes you happy. Pick what fills the world with joy. Yeah. Sorry, I got a little impassioned there. <laughs> no, that, that's it. That's beautiful. In that, ah, because that pulls the rug out of it. And, if I'm out of it or out from underneath? Out from it? under it, yeah. <laughs> it was great. It makes so much sense to me, though my mind isn't wrapping it into words very well. Well, I think the thing that can be difficult is that 
it is a choice, but it falls under the category of, you said earlier, it's not like choosing, you're going to have strawberry ice cream or vanilla ice cream. It's like, are you going to choose not to fall into addiction? Are you going to choose a healthy path? Are you going to choose to keep going up and down the stairs when you're older, even though your knees hurt? Are you going to choose to be optimistic about somebody's emotions and how they'll go through something? And so it is a harder choice to make and our culture does not make it easy on us. And that's the thing. If you are in the place of experiencing dread, then you have to A, realize that. Okay, I'm experiencing dread. I'm spending energy on worry. That's okay. Love yourself anyway, because we all get there. I am not always a joyful, happy person. Oh my gosh, heck no. <laughs> but I have things that can help me remember. One of the biggest tools we've talked about before here is A, awareness. So that's what I just mentioned. Be aware and just state it. Just speak the truth without judgment. That's okay. Because if you know where you are, you can make a choice to go forward, even if it's a tough choice. We can all do tough. We've all done tough before, okay? Especially we can do tough when we know it will lead us to more passion and more joy for ourselves and others. So remind yourself of that. And then the third thing for me is gratitude. I, I try to stop. I try to find my breath or something to focus on. And I think, what is one thing I can truly feel right inside me right now that I'm grateful for? Maybe it's the bowl of strawberry ice cream I'm eating. I've been going for strawberry today. And maybe it's just super simple, or maybe it's a super deep gratitude for the community you have around you. Or it could be just really simple. You have eyes to see the clouds that are forming and shaping and changing in the sky. So those are the first, I feel like, steps to just help you branch away from the dread. Because the dread isn't yours. It's not really you. It's just a thing you're experiencing that will pass through you. I, you're a Buddha like. No, I don't say that. <laughs> Yoda like. I mean, because there's so many elements <laughs> to this, it's really tough. But I guess it's like the starfish thrower to me mm-hmm. in some ways. Was that Lauren Isley? That's Lauren Isley, yeah. Yeah. And the guy on the beach tossing back starfish one after another. And the other person saying, this beach is littered with hundreds, if not thousands of starfish. It's not going to make a difference. And then the starfish thrower, I know you guys know this story, some of you. He says, you make a difference to that one. That's what our life is about. Living it. I, I don't think we need to worry about all the big answers. Because mm. honestly... I'm sh- I'm just I'm not sure that there's a real truth out there. There's just the truths we choose to create and the truths that we choose to believe in. That's I've really been thinking about that a lot lately. I'm reading a book on the power of storytelling. And the author suggesting that there may not be actually a truth out there that our minds are capable of of wrapping themselves around. So it's all what story we're going to use to explain our surroundings. And, mm. and there's philosophies and ideas and religions and all kinds of things that will give us stories. Mm. But if we just say, what's the story I'm going to write? What's the story I'm going to tell? That can be life-changing. Thanks for the gratitude talk because mm. you remind our family of that a lot. And that is a super essential practice. We did a video on that a long time ago, but it's so powerful to just look around you at what you love. And we can all find something. And if we can't, it doesn't mean that things aren't there. It means that our mind has been trained into a way of not seeing what's there. Mm -hmm. And we can retrain our minds. All of us can. We can train them to do and think anything that we want. And that's why if you are a person that struggles with sometimes feeling the gratitude, I sometimes do. I know it. I can think, well, I'm happy for my family and I'm really glad that I'm in good health. And But I don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, when you are in a good place, write it down and then just go back over. And sometimes it's fun to write details. Now, I am grateful for the way that your smile lights up a room from across the distance. 
it's it shines and people remember you because of your smile and and if you can read over the things that you love sometimes you can just start getting a smile without intending to <laughs> and that's when you know that that gratitude from the past because it is a practice that makes you stronger it's like lifting weights mental weights the more that you are grateful the easier it becomes to have gratitude so your eyes are such a beautiful blue oh my gosh so give us five minutes here we're gonna go back and forth <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding but i don't know this is such a tough question to answer it's one of those things that if we could really get right back into the moment and be in the present moment it's not a question that needs to be asked it's almost i don't want to say there's wrong questions but it's not quite that question isn't quite the right question mm. in a weird way. Like you said, what if we turn it around and we ask instead, how, what is life? How can we live yeah. life? Yeah, how can we have a preoccupation with, with, life? with being alive? Oh. Yeah, so I hope that wasn't offensive for whoever asked the question. Like, I don't mean you're asking the wrong question. I just You're mean, a bad person oh, for asking such a question. I just mean sometimes we come at something why is this happening? Why me? And and I think if you could can shift and ask a different question from a different angle, you can get out of that that kind of what would I call it? Uh, uh, a whirlpool, a, yeah. a suctioning into something where you're not seeing clearly and everything's moving too fast and you can just back out, look from a different way and say, "Can I see what I'm really trying to get at?" It's that assumption that if we ask a question, there's a truth there behind it. Right. Instead of seeing that, and I've encountered this a lot of times in my life, where I ask a question, and that question is creating the tension yeah. inside of me. There may yeah. probably is no truth yeah. That's that really that question point. is pointing to. Mm -hmm. It's just creating. In this case, I ask that question. I have that experience of, oh my gosh, are you going to be dead tomorrow and then that starts to create a system within me an environment within me yeah where that question keeps asking itself yeah. and i keep getting an, an emotional yeah, response food, to feedback. it yeah a food, a food back loop. Food back loop. <laughs> feedback loop i think i have one more thing to say and then i feel like i need to digest it's all this talk of food and ice cream and that's that when we think about nothing mattering because it's all just going to end. I'm wondering what it is that we want to matter. And I think, is it that I want to matter and make a difference? Do I want to be remembered? Am I worried about my own demise and being completely forgotten? Mm -hmm. And I really think that if we come back to that present moment and we come back to saying, if it doesn't matter one way or the other, why not pick what's going to make you happy? Then I... I'm going to pick choosing to believe that I make a difference. I make a difference to me. I know when I'm a good friend to myself. I know when I pay attention to what my body's asking, what my heart is asking. I make a difference to me. And that makes a difference to how I experience the world. But I also know that I make a difference to my family, to my friends, to some of you. And all of us have that all make a difference. I make a difference to some of the wild animals that I've befriended or the birds that I put at my feeder. I make a difference to plants that I take care of. I, I make a difference. Does mm. it matter if I get written down in a history book? I'll tell you this right now. If I knew I was making a difference in just one person's life and I had to give that up but be remembered forever in history, I wouldn't care about that at all because I want to help and be there for that one person, that one starfish. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I think that's something we can all choose to realize is that right now, okay, crazy, crazy thing. A number of years ago, I fractured my pelvis and sacrum falling mm -hmm. off of a horse. And when word went around that I had gotten hurt, I lost my job. I couldn't work. Um, I had a long road of recovery ahead of me. Kenton couldn't work either because I 
couldn't move. More people than I even knew who knew me flooded in with letters, with offers of help, with support. Unbelievable. I didn't even know. I didn't even know who some of these people were by name. But they knew who I was. They knew who we were. They, they knew about me. You are known and make an impact to more people than you will ever realize. And that is something to always remember. Write it down and put it on your mirror. Because we are special people, each and every one of us. And you do make a difference whether you realize it or not. And how much more awesome if you choose to also experience the gratitude, choose the joy, choose life. Thanks for coming. I think I feel like just like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> talking to talking. Oh no, this is beautiful. Oh. I'm glad you came out today. Yeah, thanks for having me. They often have to just listen to me, and I. Think, <laughs> I think I'm, a, a, I'm a different person to talk to. Oh gosh, yeah, <laughs> we have a good time, and I actually really, really, I think we both do want to hear what your experience is with this because there's so many, so many angles. What we've talked about is just one tiny. A possibility opportunity yeah. perspective and so what do you do to shift that focus from the dread from the existential abyss to realizing the value of the present moment and, and what are your thoughts on this what what gets you through so share because that's going to help all of us wow. thank you for being here with us do you have anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Do we have any ice cream? The snow. Oh. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. Sort of. Sure. Okay. <laughs> there, well. Oh, look. Lemon snow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'll get you some. Oh, my goodness gracious. Thank you very much for being here. That's all I have to say. Thanks for being here.